Hey, what's going on everybody out here? Uh, today we're coming at you from Lakes Park. Uh, this is a beautiful park that we have down here in Southwest Florida. Uh, we're actually near the beaches. It's a beautiful park. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's roughly about 85 degrees uh, mid-November. And um, I pretty much didn't have much to do today. So I decided to come down to the park, look around, enjoy the beautiful lakes. You can see the beautiful lakes. They're really nice trees. I mean, this place is really nice. And, um, you know, I kind of woke up this morning thinking to myself, you know, uh, I haven't done a review on this car, really, to speak of. I've had this car for two years now. And uh, it seems like yesterday that I just bought this 2018 Mustang. You can see it right there. Uh, for those of you who have been following the channel, you know that it's been a rough ride with this car. It hasn't really gone all that well from the beginning. I bought the car uh, in November of 2018. Uh, excuse me, November of 2017. That's how long it's been. And uh, it was one of the early builds. Uh, the car was great at first, but... You know, I ran into problems. Uh, I put the Whipple on the car about six months later. I broke an engine and um, things just didn't go so well. Uh, but um, things are looking pretty good right now. Uh, the car is actually where I want it to be. And uh, we're just gonna do a quick review on it. So let's talk about it. Okay guys, so here she is. Uh, this is my 2018 Mustang GT. Uh, this is a uh, GT Premium. It uh, doesn't have a heck of a, of a lot of options in it. It's just uh, basically a premium car. I got, um, I got the 401A package in it. It's a nice car. Uh, the beautiful Orange Fury, you know, uh, non-performance pack car. You can see there it's got the 20-inch wheels. Uh, basically, you know, I went with this package because I wanted a premium car. And um, I just did not uh, feel that the performance pack was worth it. So I went this way. And uh, the car is nice. I really love the Orange Fury. She looks really good. And um, like I say, uh, I've, I've had a rough ride with this car. You know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, do you regret it? Well, I'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, when I first got the car, it was running good. Didn't really have any problems with it. But I elected to put a Whipple Stage 1 supercharger on it. And um, I did that, and uh, it went really well at first. But it didn't take long before something went wrong. And uh, we ended up having to uh, replace this motor. Uh, for those of you who have been following the channel, uh, if you remember, this engine uh, broke a piston. I'll show it to you here. Uh, this is the broken piston that we pulled out of the engine. And uh, the engine really wasn't any good to be rebuilt that way. It needed to be sleeved and all of that. And I decided not to go that way. I decided to just basically get an engine. Uh, here it is right here. It's a live noise engine. Uh, it's a plasma bore. I did not sleeve it. Uh, it's rated for a thousand horsepower uh, in this form. It's got forged internals. It's got Ross pistons, forged pistons, uh, manly H beam rods, and some other goodies. But um, this car now uh, with that engine is, is running pretty good. I, I have to say I really like it the way it is. And uh, we're ready to move on to some other things that we'll talk about a little bit later. But I uh, just wanted to show you the car. You know, she's looking real good. Uh, I really don't have a lot of miles on it at this point. I think the, uh, the engine broke with just a little bit over 4,200 miles. And um, at this point today, here in mid-November, two years after I bought this car, uh, I've only got 5,500 miles on it. And uh, that's basically because it's, uh, it's really not a daily driver. I drive this car on the weekends with my old lady. And uh, it's just one of those kinds of cars. And uh, also through the winter of 2019, uh, for a few months, the car was laid up uh, getting its new engine. But she's looking really good, and uh, we're happy with it. Uh, would I get this car again? Well, I would say I would probably do this again, only I would approach it differently. Uh, I wouldn't be so quick to uh, throw a supercharger on it. I, I might uh, take my time a little bit with it. But, um, you know, hindsight is 2020. You can't always... <laughs> You know, you can't turn back the hands of time and uh, just make things the way you want them. You know, you learn things along the way. And uh, I've learned my lesson with this. You know, we, we learn our lessons uh, as we go through life. You know, um, you know, I'm not the kind of guy to actually buy a new car. This is uh, uncharacteristic of me. I generally don't buy new stuff. I'll wait a year or two uh, and wait for the price to come down and pick up a low mileage used car. But uh, in this case, you know, uh, I saw the Orange Fury car, uh, 460 horsepower, 5 liter, 10 speed automatic. I found it irresistible and uh, I picked this one up. So do I regret it? I would have to say, I would have to say no. 
Uh, I regret some of the things I did with it. Uh, I might do things a little bit differently to arrive at this at this place a little bit of a different way. Here you can see uh, the interior basically looks new. It's even got that little tag still on the glove box, you know, that you see when you buy these cars new. So, you know, it's uh, basically a, a weekend car. I don't do a heck of a lot with it. Um, but she's looking good now. And, uh, and I should mention, too, that... Uh, we have uh, some some suspension modification to this car. It's got uh, Ford Racing axles in it. It's got a lot of Steeda parts in the back. Uh, you no know, cradle lockouts, uh, differential bushings. You know some stop to hop parts. Uh, it's got a lot of good things in it. So um, she's looking good right now. I don't really have any complaints about the way it's running now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to what's next. Okay, so just taking a look at the motor here, uh, we see a three liter Whipple. Uh, this Whipple got a lot of attention when it first came out because it moved the intercooler to the top and the rotor pack to the bottom. Now, one of the things that got lost in the conversation about this blower, guys, is that it's a 3.4 rotor pack. The 2.9 Whipple that preceded this, that you would see on the Gen 2s, it had a 3.5 rotor pack. And uh, the 2.9 would hit hard on the bottom and carry the power into the mid range where the 3-liter Whipple hits hard in the mid-range and carries the power up top. Uh, these Gen 3s like to rev up, and uh, combined with the close ratio 10-speed automatic, uh, this car's got a 355 rear gear. It accelerates this car pretty good. Now, um, this car is equipped with a chiller, guys. Uh, you can see it right in here. Here's some of the plumbing, okay? There's the drag valve. Um, with the chiller and the closed hood dyno pulls, we actually made about 670 to the rear wheels. Pretty good numbers for a stage uh, one. But uh, there's some of the plumbing right there for the chiller. You really can't see too much of it. It's kind of hidden. Now, uh, what we have here is a stage one kit. Nothing fancy. Uh, it's uh, 50 states legal, patent pending. You can see the four inch pulley right there. Only makes about nine pounds of boost. We have a stock throttle body, an open element CAI that doesn't really work very well. I'll probably change it out at some point, but um, you know, the chiller works really good. Uh, we see intercooler temperatures, uh, intercooler fluid temperatures, I should say, uh, roughly about 40 degrees, maybe less. And uh, basically it fools this car, you know, it doesn't really know that it's in Florida. Uh, I think uh, it probably thinks it's in Michigan or something like that. But the car runs really good. I'm really happy with it. And we're gonna take it to the track. Okay, so in closing, what I'd like to say about this 2018 Mustang is that it is a car that I would buy again. Now, uh, when you think about it back in 2017 when Ford was coming out with the information about these cars, you know, 10-speed automatic, 460 horsepower. Um, they were saying that it would run 12 seconds flat in a quarter mile. Uh, that was pretty enticing. I, that was something that I really couldn't resist. And um, I decided to buy the brand new car. Now, it's unfortunate that the engine broke. Uh, it doesn't happen to everybody. I know a number of people who have stock engines. They're putting down, you know, uh, 700, or even close to 800 horsepower to the rear wheels on the stock engine, and they're not having any problems. So for me, it was just unfortunate, and uh, these things happen. What are you going to do? But um, one of the questions that's been put to me many times since I put the motor in this car is why didn't you go with a sleeved engine back then when you had the opportunity? Well, the truth is for me, guys, uh, this is a street car. Uh, this is not a car that I plan to really even call a, a street strip car. That, that's not what I use this car for. Now, uh, as if you've seen my previous videos, I did buy a set of drag radials for it. We're going to take it to the track and we're going to see what it could do. Uh, that, uh, you know, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I really i am not planning on doing other modifications to the car in the near future. So we got two drag strips near here and um, we're going to go down to Immokalee and we're going to race it down there. And... Um, you know, we're going to see how, how well it can do. But uh, getting back to the, uh, you know, sleeved or non-sleeved engine thing. Honestly, guys, uh, if I took this engine the way it is, this plasma bore engine with the forged internals, you know, it's rated to about a thousand horsepower at the crank. That equates to something like 800 horsepower to the rear wheels. You know, if I should actually achieve that much power, uh, you know, you're getting close to the car being a race car. Right? Things get less streetable and so on when you start doing that. Uh, currently, I'm putting down roughly about 670, give or take. I don't know. We'll take it to the track. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll compare the numbers between what the dyno uh, showed us 
and what the track numbers show us. But, um, you know, to me, this is a really great package. It's a street car. It runs on pump gas. I'm really happy with it the way it is. Uh, but if I should take it a little bit further, I don't see myself going beyond 800 horsepower to the rear wheels. So this plasma bore engine is perfectly capable of doing that. It's about half the price as a, uh, as a sleeved engine. So I elected to go that route. And so far, so good with this motor. This thing sounds great. So, um, yeah, so next up, uh, we're going to take this car to the track. I should have it down there in a couple of days, and I'm really excited about it. So stay with me as we go through this. All right, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.